Good evening and thank you everyone for attending Kern Council of Government's 28th Annual Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. My name is Bob Smith and I am Kern Cog's Chairman for 2019. Tonight we honor individuals and organizations that have demonstrated leadership and dedication and who have shown a commitment to making their local communities and the entire region of Kern County a better place to live and work. Now more than ever, Kern Cog's mission is crucial for our region's growth and development. Many of today's challenges do not end at convenient geographical boundaries, air pollution, traffic congestion, a growing population, and soaring utility prices. These are concerns not just for Bakersfield, for, but for also for all of Kern County residents. Our award recipients this evening demonstrate that improving one community can lead to healthier communities overall. They do this with programs that have the power to transform lives, like the Children First campaign, and the Shafter Cinco de Mayo Committee. Leaders such as Tatchby Police Departments, Kent Crager and Cheryl Wegman from the city of Wasco show us each day the amazing potential that good deeds, creativity, and dedication do to inspire our fellow residents and friends to carry the message forward and raise our region's quality of life for everyone. Fortunately, KernCog is not the only organization to recognize the important work performed by our recipients. Tonight's honorees will also be receiving certificates of recognition from the Kern County Board of Supervisors, Assemblyman Rudy Salas and Vince Fong, State Senators Shannon Grove and Melissa Hurtado, Congressman T.J. Cox and Kevin McCarthy. Some of these good people are either in the audience themselves or have representatives here to offer their warmest regards. Please hold your applause until every person is recognized. Each person, please stand as your name is announced. Ricardo De Hoya was Senator Melissa Hurtado's office. All of the mayors and city councils from the cities of Arvin, Bakersfield, California City, Delano, McFarland, Shafter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Wasco. We should have a lot. There we go. Thank you. And last but not least, we would like to recognize the Honorable Bill Thomas. <laughs> Welcome to you all and thank you for coming. The people that really make this program successful are out there with you behind the lights. You met Rochelle Invina and Angie Bonwalos, and as you checked in, they assisted with registration. Veronica McCullough was critical in collecting the reservations, managing mailings, and requesting their certificates. Matthew Pinyacek, KernCog's student intern, made sure I had a script to read, and Suzanne Campbell and Becky Napier helped organize the presentations you will see tonight. Without these members, our staff, this program would not happen. Let's give them a round of applause. I would also like to acknowledge the hard work of employees at Kern Government Television, better known as KEGA, who have helped us develop this year's presentation, highlighting the programs and individuals being honored for their outstanding achievements. The regional awards are again being recorded and will be replayed next month on KEGA. This way we have a chance to share the work of our honorees with all of Kern County. What really makes this event special is that our recipients can celebrate with friends and family. So thank you all for coming to provide your support to the honorees and to celebrate the wonderful gifts they have bestowed upon us. Now, on with the show. When a community comes together, great things can happen. Making Downtown Bakersfield Vision Plan is a perfect example of a community coming together and looking towards its future. Making Downtown Bakersfield started in 2017 with a grant from the High Speed Rail Authority for the development of a station area plan determining the future of High Speed Rail Station in Downtown Bakersfield. With this grant, the city developed a vision plan that will guide future redevelopment and growth of Downtown Bakersfield. The city of Bakersfield has collaborated with community organizations, business owners, residents, local leaders, and community stakeholders to make that plan a reality, ensuring no stone is left unturned. More than 500 residents participated in planning this project. Because of this project, downtown Bakersfield will be a place where people can connect and live while also making it high-speed rail ready. The overall purpose of this project is to make downtown Bakersfield the cultural and economic center of the state by connecting the diverse amenities of the historic downtown core to the broader region. 
fostering local business, and empowering the public to engage in the transformation of their city, all in an effort to create a truly unique and vibrant sense of community. The vision plan consists of three projects to help downtown Bakersfield become a more vibrant destination. First is the Wall Street Pedestrian Paseo, which will expand Wall Street Alley East to Mill Creek Linear Park. This project will connect multiple amenities and provide access to downtown's largest residential population. Next is the Golden State Connector, which will connect the Kern River to Mill Creek via pedestrian and bicycle path, making alternative modes of transportation an easy option. Finally, Golden State Avenue will be upgraded to ensure capacity for the high-speed rail station. While many of these projects seem daunting and far from reach, the collaboration and determination from the City of Bakersfield and its partners will get it done. Hi, you're already here. <laughs> <laughs> we congratulate the Making Downtown Bakersfield Vision Plan as a recipient of our 2018 Regional Award of Merit for Local Government. Accepting the award is Jackie Kitchen and Cecilia Griego. Thank you and congratulations. So they told us we were supposed to have a two-minute speech, so I have a couple of things to say. Uh, first of all, I'm here with Cecilia Grego. She's the principal planner that was the project manager on this, and we could not have done it without her. So thank you to Cecilia. Appreciate it. And then just a little more, what is this project? What is a vision plan? Well, it's a vision for downtown Bakersfield for how it should look for the next 10, 20, and 30 years. And this plan is bold. This plan is vibrant and it contemplates a few things that are a little outside of the comfort zones of some people uh, in our community, such as an iconic multi-story commercial or residential tower smack dab in the middle of downtown, or that urban trail or a pedestrian paseo, something that you see in other large cities across the country. This plan takes that and makes it a part of our vision here. Uh, and this plan represents something that's very important to Bakersfield and that's progress, and that's hope. So full disclosure, this plan was funded by the high-speed rail, uh, and it was funded as part of a settlement of a lawsuit that the city brought against the authority. But when they first came to us in 2013 and offered to give us grant money to fund something called a station area plan, we at the city thought about that very carefully. We realized that it was an opportunity and something that we should do as a designated station city, but we also wanted to make sure that this plan meant something to Bakersfield regardless of what happened with high-speed rail. We saw it as a chance to get great technical data about our downtown and as an opportunity to truly engage our community and figure out what they want now, what they want today, and to build upon all of the visioning efforts that we've been doing for the last 20 years. And the city was fortunate to have great partners uh, with many dedicated community uh, stakeholders, including KernCog, the DBA, the DBDC, and many more. And we launched into a three-year process. It was long, it took time, but in the end, we have this beautiful vision plan that was approved by our city council that shows real progress for the future. And the fact that our city council adopted a resolution approving this plan means that the city supports this idea of growth and something different and something new for downtown. And it's our sincere hope that this is just the beginning of what Bakersfield will be for the future. So we're really appreciative to Kern Cog for giving us this award. Thank you. Thank you. Greek people live in this community and many of their stories haven't been told or recognized. But tonight we recognize a young man who cares about Bakersfield and shows it through volunteering and promoting an active lifestyle by bicycling. Aaron Gonzalez found his passion for volunteering at 14 years old, volunteering for a nonprofit called Bike Bakersfield. He volunteered cleaning the shop and helping the mechanic recycle bike parts, which helped him earn his first bike. That is how his love for volunteering began. Aaron loved volunteering so much that he volunteered for AmeriCorps and the Bakersfield Burrito Project in order to help his community. After volunteering at both initiatives, Aaron returned to work at Bike Bakersfield, bringing his journey full circle. His first task at Bike Bakersfield was during his college years at California State University Bakersfield. Aaron was the outreach liaison and safe routes to school program manager teaching children about walking and bicycling. 
Now Aaron is the program's director of Bike Bakersfield and plans to continue his volunteer and conservation goals to help encourage active transportation in Bakersfield and surrounding communities. He encourages community members to ride safely, predictably, and efficiently. Shortly after becoming program's director, Aaron said, I am really just excited to get out and teach bicycle and pedestrian safety to children, adults, and anyone who commutes. Aaron's outlook of conservation and volunteerism has sculpted him into the man he is today, and he uses his leadership qualities to encourage others to volunteer and give back to the community. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, appreciate that, and more people on more bikes is better. you got a few words. Awesome. Uh, very grateful to be up here. I've uh, always just really enjoyed helping um, and you know working at Bike Bakersfield I really get to do that. Uh, I've really enjoyed being in the community, teaching you know kids uh, to people in their 80s how to ride bikes for the first time. Uh, really like to thank uh, the Bike Bakersfield board and the sponsors that, and everyone else that uh, helps out Bike Bakersfield uh, and special thank you to uh, Kern Cog for giving me this award. Children need a healthy community to grow up in so they can prosper and achieve greatness. Andre Gonzalez started the Children First campaign to do just that, create prosperous communities, ensure that all children live in healthy, safe, and nurturing neighborhoods that promote academic achievement and success. All this is important to help counter the negative influences of drugs, crime, violence, and poverty. Andre, the Children First campaign, the Pandelce Club, and numerous community members all worked tirelessly to create the David Nelson Pocket Park, which opened on October 26, 2018 in East Bakersfield. Andre said it's supposed to be a space for community and families and children to come together in a positive way. The passion that Andre Gonzalez has for protecting the community is unwavering, and people like him are what makes Bakersfield such a great place to live. Andre and the Children First campaign also host community cleanup events to keep the youth away from harmful activities and make the community a nicer place to live. Andre and the Children First campaign will continue their mission to keep children off the street and focused on school. Because of Andre and the Children First campaign, the community in East Bakersfield now has a safe park and fun events for children to play and keep away from harm. We're proud to present our 2018 Regional Award of Merit for community involvement to Bakersfield City Council member and my friend, Andre Gonzalez, and the Children First Campaign. We already welcome him, yep. so it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Smith, and uh, thank you all. Thank you, Kern Cog, for the recognition. Uh, this is truly an honor, but uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, this was a team effort. Uh, there were so many people. Uh, who worked very hard over the last four years to make uh, the Pocket Park happen, the David Nelson Pocket Park a reality. Um, and some of the folks who were um, instrumental in the project are here tonight. I told them I'd get the recognition and they get a free dinner, so we all won uh, tonight. And uh, um, I first want to thank uh, the Bakersfield Californian Foundation who uh, provided Children First a $50,000 grant to get started to buy the property and then um, offered us a $50,000 challenge grant, which we met. And in sum, we were able to raise over $350,000 to make this pro project a reality. I'd also like to thank some of the Children First board members who are here. Abel Moreno, who is the treasurer, long-term treasurer, and who had to deal with me every single day over the last few years. I'd like to thank uh, Ed De La Vega and our uh, chairman of the board, uh, Carlos Bayo. I'd also like to thank the local carpenters, Local 661, who took the project uh, by, uh, by storm and, and really helped us make this project happen. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank our architects, Cater Design Group, who provided a lot of uh, technical support throughout the project. Um, you know, what we're doing in East Bakersfield is tremendous with city investments and with private investment and nonprofit work uh, to really bring light to an area that has for too long been neglected. And we're bringing recognition to an area that is often seen as blighted and depressed, but in fact, they have so many wonderful families who have big hopes and big dreams, talented 
young people who are smart and who deserve every opportunity uh, to succeed in life, and we're going to give it to them. And we continue to work with the school district in order to provide them all the opportunities that they deserve. It's a rich neighborhood. It's a rich community. And it's one that we're going to continue to invest in. So thank you very much again. Culture is a huge part of every community. It has the power to bring people together and shape the image of a community. In 1991, Albert Roy and Deanna Root decided to put the culture of Shafter on display by starting the Shafter Cinco de Mayo Festival. The mission of the festival was to bring the community of Shafter together through cultural celebration. Roy has passed since that day when he started the festival, but his daughter Brandy has stepped in to help her mother run the Cinco de Mayo committee. The committee consists of 12 hardworking individuals who raise the required funds for this event every year. The committee finds businesses and individuals who graciously sponsor the Cinco de Mayo Festival. But they do more than just finance the festival with their fundraising. They also raise enough money to provide deserving students of Shafter High School and nonprofit youth organizations with scholarships. The festival is so successful it brings in people from all over Kern County, the San Joaquin Valley, and as far as Los Angeles and Phoenix to participate in this unique community event. The festival kicks off with a parade and consists of culture, music, dancers, food, arts, crafts, and so much more. Roy, Deanna, and now Brandy Root understood the importance of embracing culture, and with their leadership, the festival and its committee showcased the traditions of Shafter while bringing the community together. The 2018 Regional Award of Merit for Community Involvement is presented to the Cinco de Mayo Committee of the Shafter Chamber of Commerce. Accepting this award is Deanna Rodriguez Root and her daughter Brandy Root. I have a few things written down. She's going to talk. <laughs> um, we'd like to thank you for this award, this amazing award. Um, for choosing our committee. We work really hard every year. Um, there's about three months of our lives that we put into it. Um, our committee, we would like to thank our committee, because if it wasn't for you guys, then we couldn't have this. Um, please stand. There's, there's a group that volunteers. Excuse me. Oh. Thank you. There's a group that volunteers and takes their time and, and puts their heart into this event, and we couldn't do it without our committee. So um, Jose Chavez, um, our parade committee is um, an intricate part of it also. Jose is our chairperson for our parade. He also emcees our event. Lorena Ayon is parade and park, par, parade and park, um, volunteers. Luis Rodriguez, Gilbert Alvarado, uh, Francis Garcia is our MC. You've been our MC for about 20 years. Um, probably over 20 years. Um, Angel Jimenez takes care of our entertainment and helps me with promotion a lot. So thank you and he does all of our sound. Um, I would like to also thank the Chamber of Commerce you, and we're under your umbrella, and without you guys, we couldn't have this event also in the city of Shafter for letting, allowing us to put on this event for our community. Um, uh, Luis Rodriguez is also our treasurer. He puts up with a lot and when we're throwing receipts at him, so thank you. Um, thank you for this award. Um, our committee is made up of some amazing volunteers. We began our Cinco de Mayo celebration in order to give back to our community. Um, we are fortunate to have had our festival running for this will be the 27th year. It all started with an idea that my mother and my, and I get emotional because I miss my dad. My dad hasn't been here since 2007. He passed away of cancer. So this was his you know, his baby. Um, it started with an idea that my mo mother and father had of giving back to our community. My dad was always big on that. Um, today, the festival has grown quite a bit. 
we have thousands of people that come out from all over um, to just come on that one day to our small town. Um, it has grown to be one of the biggest festivals in Kern County. We're also able to give back to our community in the form of scholarships, which is something that was very uh, dear to my father's heart. Um, and we would like to thank everybody for this award. If it wasn't for all of you, we couldn't keep it going. You wanna say anything? I just wanna thank everybody for all the years that you've put up with me. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Transportation is a crucial aspect of any county's economy. Some of Kern County's roads aren't up to par, and the Freeman Gulch Segment 1 Lane Widening Project is addressing one of those roads, State Route 14. State Route 14 is used by many different types of travelers, such as commuters between Lancaster, Edwards Air Force Base, and the Mojave areas. It is also heavily used by truck traffic as means to connect to State Route 58, State Route 178, and US 395. Many of these connections are critical to commuters not only in Kern County, but for those trying to reach places like Nevada via State Route 14 and the US 395 Joint Corridor. The current two lanes are not enough to support the heavy flow of commuters using State Route 14. This is why the Freeman Gulch widening is critical to our county. The current two-lane highway is being converted into a four-lane highway to support the amount of commuters and trucks that use it daily. The first segment of this widening, which has already been completed, turned four miles of the outdated highway into a four-lane expressway. The new portion of road will improve safety for the traveling public by separating opposing traffic, removing passing restrictions, controlling and limiting access points, and providing adequate shoulder widths for emergencies. The new shoulders also provide a much needed area for emergency and disabled vehicle parking, providing a safe refuge for vehicles until help arrives. Cooperation was a major part of this project with Granite Construction, Caltrans, officials from Inyo, Mono, and Kern Counties all coming together to help make this project a reality. Along with funding from Kern Council of Governments, the Inyo and Mono Local Transportation Commissions, and Caltrans. All of these organizations made this project possible. There are still two segments left of this widening process, but what has been done so far makes the future of this project look promising. We're proud to present our 2018 Regional Award of Merit for Transportation to the Freeman Gulch Segment 1 Widening Project. Brian Winson Reed, Deputy District Director of Project Delivery from Caltrans District 9, will be accepting this award. I'd like to thank Kern Cog for the, uh, recognizing this important project with this award. Um, it's through a partnership with Kern Cog um, and Caltrans that we can get these projects um, for both the safety and um, goods movement for the state of California the tra uh, and the visitors to and residents of Kern County. Um, I have to recognize Minerva Rodriguez and Sam Dollywall. Um, Minerva was the project manager on the project and Sam was the resident engineer. And uh, without, without them and their diligence in seeing this project through, it couldn't have been completed. So once again, I'd like to thank Kern Cog for making this a reality and we look forward to partnering with you on the, the remaining segments of this route. And thank you. As everyone who lives in Kern County knows, the air quality can be quite bad. There are many people who are trying to help improve the air quality in our county to make it healthy to breathe year round. Christine Vitarelli is one of these people. Christine works nonstop for the city of Arvin, researching and applying for grants that will help reduce the city's greenhouse gas emissions and improve the living conditions for all residents. Christine only started working for the city of Arvin in October of 2016, but in that short time has already made a huge impact. She has applied for and received a grant for $2.3 million from the Federal Transit Authority to purchase three electric buses and charging station infrastructure. Believe it or not, Arvin was the only city in California to receive a grant from the Federal Transit Authority. Thanks to Christine, Arvin hopes to completely transform its bus fleet into an all-electric force by 2025. But that isn't all. Christine also wants to apply for grants to transform the city's sidewalks and bike paths and plant trees throughout the community to curb emissions. 
Her goals align with the City of Arvins to reduce vehicle and carbon emissions by increasing multimodal transportation while at the same time improving the landscape of the beautiful community of Arvin. Christina's proof that change can happen fast and if you find the right people, anything is possible. Thanks to her efforts, Kern County is going to be a healthier place to live. Proud to present the Regional Award of Merit for Transportation to Christine Vitarelli from the City of Arvin. Ah, uh, yes, I'd like to thank the Academy. Oh, that was a couple weeks ago. Well, first of all, I will tell you that um, my father taught me to dream big and that nothing is impossible if you believe it is possible. But the fact of the matter is any project requires teamwork. It requires effort by many, many people and I would just like to acknowledge our city council, Mayor Garola, Jerry Breckenridge, our city manager, Pavan Gill, our administrative director of administrative services, and several members behind the scenes who actually make it happen and make our vision a reality, as well as Hisham Ezlal, I can never do that, Ezlali, <laughs> who is our transit director, and literally this whole concept of this grant started out with us in a huddle saying, what can we do to improve air quality? And we took our vision into an actual reality. So with that, I'd like to just say, and my husband, thank you for the many cold dinners you've had. <laughs> While I'm huddling in the middle of Arvin at midnight, trying to figure out how we're gonna make this happen. And um, to my mom, Catherine Vitarelli, who without her, I wouldn't be here today. Made famous by John Steinbeck's novel, The Grapes of Wrath, Arvin still echoes the cries of adversity as we struggle with socioeconomic and environmental challenges. Arvin serves some of the poorest and most heavily polluted areas in Kern County. Our neighbors are impacted by emissions from commercial fleets, industrial discharge, container trucks, and highway traffic within the Kern County limits. With the goal to improve air quality, Arvin is an early adopter of alternative fuel vehicles, electric buses, and renewable energy, and is implementing urban greening programs to sequester carbon. The concept of blue skies for all is that all people, regardless of their status or their wealth, or the color of their skin should have access to clean air. Thank you. When the city of Bakersfield sees a problem, they fix it. The city had over 12,800 inefficient, high-maintenance, high-pressure sodium streetlight fixtures. The light fixtures were wasting energy, money, and causing pollution. To fix this problem, the city of Bakersfield decided to work with PG&E to find a solution. After lots of analysis done by the city of Bakersfield, they decided to utilize a no-interest loan offered by Pacific Gas and Electric, which is paid back through energy savings with no cost to the city. With this loan, the city was able to replace all 12,800 inefficient light fixtures within four months, while most cities take years to replace all of their light fixtures. The new LED lights use 50 to 75 percent less energy than the old light fixtures and are estimated to reduce power plant emissions by over 2.4 million pounds of carbon dioxide per year. Pedestrians will also be safer because the new lights increase visibility. Last but not least, taxpayers will save because the cost to operate and maintain the city's inventory of streetlights will go down. The savings provided by the new streetlights can go toward other community priorities such as public safety or parks and streets. Equally as important as the energy savings was the city's desire to spread the word about this important conservation project. Through the use of videos, social media, infographics, and media events, the city and PG&E were able to educate the public on the benefits of the project, with a special focus on the energy conservation component of the retrofit. The city also developed a dedicated web page that provides information about the project, including a real-time map that showed the progression of the fixture retrofits as the work was completed. 
Thanks to PG&E and the City of Bakersfield working closely together, this project was completed within a year and the savings are already happening. It is not every day a city chooses to implement a project that has such a positive environmental impact. 2018 Ken Volk Regional Award of Merit for Environmental Resources and Conservation is presented to the City of Bakersfield. Are we on now? Okay. Uh, that power conservation, we're back on track. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kern Cog, for this award. I just want to say that without pg &E's assistance with this project, it would, not, it would not have been feasible. We were on track to do this program over several years, as the video had stated. Uh, pg &E, we've been working with them for several years to try to, to uh, improve our energy efficiency through our facilities and our streetlight program. Uh, prior to this, we did a, a previous on-bill financing program for around 670 streetlights when PG&E had a maximum value of $250,000 to convert streetlights. The city of Bakersfield has approximately 17,500 streetlights. This program helped us convert three quarters of our streetlight systems to LED. Uh, uh, through the partnership with PG&E making this possible, we were able to complete that within a four-month period. So again, this was a great partnership and opportunity for the city of Bakersfield, and it couldn't have been possible without the help from PG&E, Kristen Burke, and, and Brent Pentoa. Uh, they were able to go through and find the funds that we needed uh, through their programs. Thank you, and thank you, Kern Cog. This day and age, technology is being used in every aspect of life. So maybe it's not surprising that a municipality would see the advantages to using technology to improve their public presence. That's exactly what the city of Tehachapi did and it worked. About three years ago, Tehachapi made a decision to hire a part-time community engagement specialist, Key Budge, with the intention of helping better control the messages from the city on social media. Since Tehachapi is a smaller community, gossip, speculation, and mistruths regarding city projects, initiatives, and efforts were running rampant. The Community Engagement Initiative, with the help of Key Budge and other city staff, has helped reshape the public perception of city business. Video is the most consumed form of media on the internet. Tehachapi took advantage of this fact in 2018 by renewing its focus on personalizing their story with a video element. The videos featured city staff, elected officials, and community members as they gave updates on projects, new businesses, and special events happening around the community. As proof of their success in 2018, Tehachapi received 98,300 views, which was a 61.5% increase from their video efforts in 2017. Their videos also received 11,000 more minutes of viewing time as compared to the previous year. Tehachapi uses their social media videos to update the community about special events and public and private construction projects in the city. For a small organization, the city of Tehachapi is effectively using video while most government organizations with much larger staffs are not. Their volume of content, quality, and messaging is equivalent to private sector journalism and uses far less staff. With limited resources and staff time, the City of Tehachapi video series in 2018 has proven to be worthy of recognition for the results they have produced the information they have shared, and their ability to increase the public understanding of city issues. The 2018 Regional Award of Merit for Journalism is presented to the City of Tehachapi for their 2018 Community Video Initiative. Accepting the award are Corey Costello and Mayor Susan Wiggins. Unfortunately, Key couldn't be here tonight, and Corey will explain that, but I have to tell you, in my other life, I was a journalist and a PR person, so I know a little bit about it. And we have the best person in at least the state of California for a videographer and PR person, and that would be Key Budge. I think it, I find it um, sort of ironic that after a career in journalism and communications that I had to become a bureaucrat to get a accept an award in journalism. <laughs> Got to be good at something, right? Um, but Mayor Wiggins sort of pointed it out that um, 
you know, the person who really should be up here is Key Budge, our community engagement specialist. But um, yeah, his his wife is is beating cancer for the second time, and so it was one of those chemo days where yeah. It was one of those, those chemo days where, you know, he just knew it wasn't going to happen. And, and we said, man, we're really sorry that you can't be here. He said, it's all right. It's a team win. And that really sort of sums up the city of Tehachapi, the staff. I mean, a perfect example. You know, we have Angie Krager, our police chief's daughter, taking photos for us tonight. I mean, this is what we do. We, it's, it's, a team, uh, it's a team effort for sure. But the, the initiative was started really just to sort of control the message, as the video pointed out. Um, get staff in front of the camera to give updates. We have a lot going on, and we're a small community, and let people know where things stand. And, and so we embrace social media when a lot of organizations like to avoid it. And, and we didn't really want to let the public fill in the blanks especially in a small town, and some of our small community constituents can kind of understand that. Um, but special thanks to, to Greg Garrett, our city manager, for his vision for sort of creating this position and this, this initiative. And of course, every city department, you saw quite a few, some kicking and screaming, but they've gotten pretty good at it. So, and now it's kind of a competition. Now my video got 2,000 views. Oh yeah, mine got 2,500. We're still trying to top Greg, though. Greg still got the top. That Apple Fest video ruled the day. Um, special thanks to the city council for their support, and of course, the citizens who spent 32,000 minutes last year watching this stuff online. So, thank you. Being a police officer encompasses a lot of responsibility and stress. You have to be willing to make hard decisions while also protecting the people in your community. Chief Kent Krager exemplifies what being a good police officer who respects his community and the law is all about. Chief Krager, along with his staff, continue to keep Tehachapi as one of the safest communities in Kern County. In an era of budget cuts, Chief Krager has been able to keep his law enforcement agency running smoothly. In fact, the Tehachapi Police Department is the only on-patrol police force 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the Tehachapi region. In his five years of managing the Tehachapi Police Department, Chief Krager has called upon his previous years of experience with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department to bring leadership with an emphasis upon investigations and addressing quality of life issues. This emphasis comes in a department that is not currently staffed with a detective or investigator. Instead, patrol officers are each required to conduct complete investigations from beginning to end. All officers within the department are responsible for authorizing search and arrest warrants for criminal cases. This innovative approach to police work has helped solve and successfully prosecute suspects for a multitude of crimes, some with countywide implications. Many cities complain of problem areas and neighborhoods that are susceptible to blight and eventually crime. In Tehachapi, Chief Krager emphasizes preventing those areas from becoming a chronic nuisance. Chief Krager uses one full-time and one part-time code enforcement officer for the primary duties of code enforcement. As a result of the code enforcement efforts, Tehachapi has seen a number of previously dilapidated properties being rehabilitated. Four homes and structures previously abandoned have been completely rehabilitated in the last year, which increased property values and significantly reduced crime in those neighborhoods. 2018 Richard A. Maxwell Regional Award of Merit for Public Safety is presented to Chief Kent Krager with the Tehachapi Police Department. What's left to say? You know, I grew up in a small town, another small East Kern County town. Now I love Tehachapi. But sometimes in small towns, people are like, we don't need our own police department. They'll just mess around. They'll be like Andy Griffith or whatever, you know, won't be professional. But we, here we are. We are professional, we're proud, and we couldn't be happier or more proud of our police chief. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you to the current Council of Governments for hosting this uh, incredible event tonight and for considering the Tashby Police Department for this award. Uh, I'm extremely honored and humbled to be receiving this award on behalf of the Tashby Police Department. When we study successful leaders, we always look at the individual and we ask ourselves if there's something special about this person and how do they do what they do. Oftentimes though, we overlook the most important factor that contributes to their success, 
and that's the staff or team that that leader is surrounded by. I wouldn't be standing before you tonight if it weren't for my extremely talented staff. About three years ago, we were facing some staffing challenges and I was forced to eliminate my detective position. I, I saw this as an opportunity to challenge my staff uh, to develop and really um, empower them to go out and do their own investigations. Uh, they not only rose to the challenge, but they significantly exceeded my expectations. Um, this would not have been possible without strong supervision and uh, guidance from a number of uh, very talented supervisors that I have, uh, Sergeant Amelia Thompson, Lieutenant Liska, Sergeant Drew Funderburg, Sergeant Jason Dunham, uh, one of my reserve detectives, uh, Mark Mechanic, came out of retirement after about 35 years with LA County and came to work for me. And they've really stepped up and helped guide these young officers and direct them in these investigations. And they've been extremely, extremely successful. Uh, so thank you all for all your dedication and hard work. I'd also like to thank my city manager, Greg Garrett, for uh, five years ago giving me the opportunity to be your chief of police. Um, Mr. Garrett has been uh, extremely supportive, has given me the, the freedom uh, to develop this department based upon my vision and is always there to provide that support for me as we push through this. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank my wife, Donna, who's been by my side for over 30 years of a law enforcement career. Uh, she absolutely understands the demands of the job and is always there pushing me to be better. I think she's just trying to get me out of the house or keep <laughs> me out of the house, but, uh, but that's okay. She's always been there for me. Uh, and, and finally, just in closing, uh, I, I can't tell you guys enough. I, I truly, truly love this profession. And while it's certainly, I'm certainly grateful to be the recipient of this award tonight, the greatest reward for me is to see the progress and development of my staff and share in their success and hope that I some way and contributed to that. Thank you. Gun violence can be a hard crime to stop, especially when you can't identify where the gunshots come from. The Bakersfield Police Department did their due diligence and adopted a system to better locate where gunfire takes place. The system is called Shot Spotter and is here to improve the safety of Bakersfield residents. Shot Spotter is a gunshot detection system which provides pinpoint locations of gunfire. Shot Spotter consists of gunshot sensors positioned within an identified area of concern. When these sensors activate, they record the sound of gunshots and through triangulation provide their location. Within seconds, users of the system receive notification via mobile data computers and registered mobile devices. This technology helps the Bakersfield Police Department and the community by locating gunfire that is not reported by citizens. Shot Spotter assists responding officers and medical aid in many ways including pinpointing the location of gunfire, improving response times by officers and medical aid, assisting in the prosecutions of crime related to gunfire, the seizure of firearms used in these crimes and providing actionable intelligence on the frequency of gunfire. Since going live in March of 2018, ShotSpotter has resulted in a 13% reduction in gunfire-related assaults. ShotSpotter has 292 confirmed activations resulting in 15 arrests. The Bakersfield Police Department staff anticipates that the coverage area of ShotSpotter will grow in the future as the community and police department continue to benefit from the program. Due to the use of the innovative technology that ShotSpotter provides, the Bakersfield Police Department will continue to make the city a safe place to live for all residents. The 2018 Richard A. Maxwell Regional Award of Merit for Public Safety is presented to the Bakersfield Police Department and their use of ShotSpotter technology, which we love. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Smith. Uh, my name is Mike Hill. I have the privilege to work at the Bakersfield Police Department with all these fine men and women back here at table number one. They didn't want to stand, so I won't make them. Um, I do find it important to recognize the, uh, the officer behind this award, uh, Richard A. Maxwell. He was a California Highway Patrolman, and back in uh, July 
1994, he was victim, victimized of gun violence. He uh, stopped a car, and uh, as a result of that car stop, two of the occupants of that vehicle shot and killed him. So at that time, Officer Maxwell was protecting and serving his community as all of we do in here on a daily basis, so I thank you for that. Um, on behalf of the men and women of the Bakersfield Police Department, and again, this group back here, um, and our chief, Lyle Martin, who could not be here this evening, it's an honor to be here this evening to help uh, further memorialize the life of uh, Officer uh, Richard A. Maxwell. The, uh, the mission of the Bakersfield Police Department is to partner with the community, protect the lives and the property of the people that we serve. We try to do that as best as we can with compassion, accountability, and professionalism. And one problem we have in our community, as evidenced by the video you watched, is gun violence. We have tried many strategies over the years, a lot of successes, and of course, some failures. So what we have done is we partnered with ShotSpotter to create this program and installed gunshot detection devices, if you will, in an approximate three mile square radius. Uh, ShotSpotter lets us know when gunshots are uh, fired and officers can respond as well as medical aid, which includes fire and ambulance. It has reduced our response time to help the victims and to investigate the crimes and uh, arrest the uh, violators, as well as has reduced the response times of the EMS system so that we can get help to the victims of gunshots. Um, a little update on some of the data. Um, we have found that since the inception of ShotSpotter, which was in March of 2018, that only about 20% of the citizens are calling in and reporting these gunshots. Since January of 2019 till, I believe, the end of February, correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, we've had an 8% increase in people calling in. And that's from our shot spotter crew back here going and educating the public. We're starting to educate a lot of the parents who reside in the area of concern where, these shot, where the shot spotter devices are installed, which is, which is great news. Um, ShotSpotter, it's not the only solution to gun violence. However, it is one small component to the solution. I believe that the people, the police, and other public service entities like you folks in this room working together is a huge part of the solution. So it is our hope that we can collectively continue to reduce gun violence and make our community safe and a better place to live. So I'd like to thank the Kern Council of Governments Award Committee for selecting the Shot Spotter program and the Bakersfield Police Department. Thank you. The Regional Award of Merit for Innovation can be a tough category to fill. However, its importance with the insurgence of technology makes innovation all that more important. Judge David Wolf recognized this power and found a way to use technology to make the arraignment process more cost efficient. Judge David Wolf's video arraignments are the perfect example of an innovative project. Before video arraignments, prisoners had to be escorted from the prison where they were housed to a courtroom in Kern County which may be far away. For example, if someone was housed in the Pelican Bay State Prison and had their arraignment in Kern County, it is a 624 mile trip one way, which usually takes two days to travel. This process wastes valuable resources and puts people's lives in danger. Using video arraignments provides for significant time savings, cost savings, manpower savings, and increased public safety. Judge Wolf is saving tax dollars and providing a more innovative courtroom procedure. Judge Wolf and his team perform arraignments of inmates who commit a crime while incarcerated in California Department of Correctional and Rehabilitation prisons, as well as private prisons in Kern County. Court staff work together to schedule the arraignments four weeks prior to their digital appearance. The inmates appear live on a monitor inside the prison court with streaming technology while they are safely housed at prison facilities. The judge is then able to complete the arraignment process, which is a quick process that involves a brief pre-hearing court appearance, additional assignment of court dates, and then bail is set. The whole process takes about 15 minutes. Using this technology, Judge Wolf, Kern County, and the state of California can alleviate the public safety risks of an inmate traveling up to 1,200 miles. The process also saves taxpayers money from transportation costs like vehicle maintenance, fuel, and regular or overtime work hours. The cost savings has been estimated to be over $1 million annually. Since 2017, about 70% of the arraignments in Judge Wolf's prison court have occurred on live video streaming. 
The 2018 Regional Award of Merit for Innovation is presented to Judge David Wolf and the prison court. Thank you, congratulations. Well, first I wanna thank Kern Cog, everybody has, but I wanna thank them because, not just for this award, but year after year, Kern Cog reminds us of the amazing things that are going on in Kern County and why Kern County is the best place to live in California. If you wanna to put together a program that's gonna protect people's constitutional rights, protect victims' constitutional rights, and save the taxpayers over a million dollars, you need a statewide team, and that's why I've asked everyone up here to join me. It's not me, and I told Kern Cog I would be willing to accept this award on behalf of everybody. I have an amazing court staff, most of them hiding over there. I have to thank the city of Delano. We've got our partners here who give us the space. It's the old, it's the old cotton, I'm sorry. It's the old <laughs> Delano Police Department that was sitting there empty and being unused right behind the courthouse. So we revented, re we redid the uh, empty police department, and thank you very much. I appreciate it from the city of Delano. I have to thank Sheriff Youngblood and his deputies who prote protect us. Uh, District Attorney Cindy Zimmer and her team. We have Arthur Norris here somewhere. There's Art Norris, and we have Brandon Stallings, some of our prosecutors, hiding in the background somewhere. I don't know, maybe they did come up. I've got Pam Singh there, they, Pam Singh, uh, our public defender, and Peter Kang. We've got Henry Marquez from IDP. The attorneys are a major part. It's the attorneys that make sure the constitutional rights of our victims and our defendants are not trampled on by our court, so I'm grateful to them. We need to thank the dedicated men and women of the California Department of Corrections. Also, their representative CCPOA, we have 10 representatives here tonight. That's all five of our prisons in, our current, in Kern County. We have wardens here, we have staff, and we've got people from Sacramento. Speaking of Sacramento, the people that have come, that work for you, are driving back tonight for two reasons. One, they have work to do tomorrow, and two, they are so on board with saving taxpayer money. <laughs> One of the gentlemen I'd like to pull over here, this is Secretary Ralph Diaz. Secretary Diaz is the director of the California Department of Corrections. He is their top dog. He has come down to be part of this. We are so grateful because without their help, this program would not exist. So he's not been to Kern County at this event ever before, so if we could give him a great Kern County welcome. Please welcome Secretary Diaz. Thank you, Kern Cog, and thank you, Judge Wolf. Um, I am a Tulare County boy myself, so I'm just a partner right down the road, but right now I reside up in Sacramento doing uh, the state's work. I do want to thank Kern County and Judge Wolf for their vision in implementing this video, present video arraignments. That means a lot to us because what the belief is, every time an inmate leaves an institution, that's a mini prison rolling down the road, and I believe they're better served when they're inside the institution while providing all the safeguards and judicial requirements that there are, and it came from the vision, the vision that came out of Kern County and the vision of Judge Wolf. On number one, the vision and the courage to try and enter in to uh, some work with the bureaucracy called the state of California. <laughs> and uh, Judge Wolf did that. He did that because he was open, he was patient, but in the end, he got the support of the institutions. And in the end, that's what us headquarters people are here to do, support the institutions. You have some great wardens here. We have Warden uh, Christian Pfeiffer. We have Warden uh, Christian Pfeiffer, <laughs> Warden uh, John Sutton. But uh, more importantly, we have the supportive staff of all the correctional officers right behind me, which uh, without this, None of this would happen. None of this would happen. These fine correctional officers and representatives from the California Correctional Peace Officers Association, uh, this wouldn't have been possible if we wouldn't have had their great ideas, we wouldn't have had their recommendations on how to best implement this, because the best ideas come from the line staff, not from the big guys like me in headquarters. And uh, I just want to thank them, but Judge Wolf, thank you for bringing this to us, and I appreciate the work. Thank you, everybody. Every city deserves a mayor who genuinely cares about each citizen, a mayor who will go out of their way to educate themselves to help others, a mayor who always finds time to help someone with an issue. California City is lucky because they had a mayor who did exactly that. Mayor Jennifer Wood was always open and honest with her citizens. She made every effort to be accessible and create an open dialogue. 
To assist with this process, Mayor Wood took an active role in the Vision 360 process, which included input from citizens, staff, and council members to establish a new and success-oriented vision for the future of California City. She also served as mayor when the cannabis industry first showed interest in coming to California City and did endless hours of research to make sure it would not have a negative impact on the community. Mayor Wood is dedicated to ensuring economic development, creating a safe, clean environment, and improving safety in her beautiful desert community. Her dedication to the city explains why she was elected in 2012 and re-elected in 2014 and 2016. Mayor Jennifer Wood will undoubtedly be remembered for the unlimited amount of time she has given representing California City. Her dedication to her community is unwavering, from joining in on city cleanup days to sharing her knowledge for assisting outside agencies. She has served on the Kern Council of Government Board of Directors since 2012 and has represented that board in other capacities such as representing the COG on the California Van Pool Authorities Board. Some of you may remember the numerous times Mayor Wood represented the Kern COG Board as the MC of these regional awards. She has worked diligently to bring California City and its needs to the forefront, always striving to make a difference in her community. Her example of leadership is to be commended and emulated. The 2018 Daryl Hildebrand Regional Award of Merit for Distinguished Leadership goes to former Mayor Jennifer Wood of California City. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kern Council of Governments, KGov, my friends in the back of the room, and um, so many other people that are responsible for this. I am honored and humbled to receive this award. My experience in leadership started when I was in the United States Air Force. That's where I learned leadership. It was there that I learned about the discipline and grit that it would take to be a leader. I had no idea what it would take to become an elected municipal leader, uh, a mayor of all things. But I observed and I learned from many of the leaders I met and grew to respect while serving on the Kern Council of Governments and from the great mayors of our Kern County cities. Topping the list, I have to say, is Aaron Hakimi. Um, the executive director of the COB, COG. He's a pro at navigating through the bureaucracy to bring critical projects to the funding and ex execution stages. He also championed projects to, that help spotlight the importance in each of our communities of our transportation challenges. And for us, it's a 140th Street extension off of Edwards Air Force Base to keep people from having to, to go to an at-grade intersection to go to Edwards Air Force Base. Elected members made, had a big impact on me too. Assemblyman Tom Lackey made many trips to California City and voted on issues that were important to us in the eastern region of Kern County. And there are our supervisors, David Couch and Zach Scrivener, my representative, that, served, that I served with on the COG. They lead the way to help fund the important projects to each of our cities and our communities. Supervisor Scrivener got the Eastern Kern Economic Diversification Study funded, and now the implementation phase is, is going on now. I cannot emphasize enough to all of you in this room how important that project is to the communities of East Kern County. Um, and then there's count, former council member Cheryl Lee Wegman, my friend and partner in government. And I know I'm going to miss some of you, but I only have two minutes. So um, my friend Ridgecrest Mayor Peggy Breeden, my friend Tehachapi Mayor Susan Wiggins, former Tehachapi Mayor and the late Ed Grimes, and my, fan, my friend, former Bakersfield Mayor, the late Harvey Hall. Each of them proved to be great role models for me to learn from, and I could go on and on, and as you all know, I could, because there's many more faces in this room, and I'm looking at many of them right now, that had a positive influence on my ability to lead during challenging times. But it's important that I tell you, when seeking to change the economic course of a city via a controversial industry, it takes the strength of character to overcome many of the challenges and sometimes negative judgment that we faced. The city of California City is moving forward with this industry, and it's, we're hoping it's ramping up, and this will help move our city from a city where the citizens have to reach deeper in their pockets because we don't have the retailer property tax base to fund all our services, so we got a supplemental taxation, and uh, to hopefully bring the revenue that we need to make California City the shining light that we all know it can be. I also hope that historians will be kind when they look back on what I and others who serve our cities, county, state, and country achieve 
for the betterment of our citizens, and that we will all continue to have the courage and resolve to bring a better quality of life to all in Kern County who live, work, and play in all of our communities. In closing, I want to thank some of the folks who joined me tonight from California City. I have City Manager Bob Stockwell with me, uh, Denise Hilliker, our City Clerk, Alexia Sveda, who is on the East Kern Economic Implementation Team, Mary Johnson, our HR lead, Anna Lynn, and most importantly, my husband, Woody, who was there every step of the way supporting me through this journey. Thank you for the nomination, thank you for the award, and thank you again for all of your, your support and respect. May God bless all of you here tonight, and thank you. Thank you. When multiple organizations and people recognize the same person for the great work she has done, that person must be quite special. In 2004, she was named Citizen of the Year by the Wasco Chapter of the Future Farmers of America for her many contributions to the community. In 2018, she received the Woman of the Year recognition from the 32nd Assembly District. This woman is Cheryl Wegman. Cheryl is a native of Wasco and throughout her years of public service has always tried to improve the quality of life for its residents. She graduated from Wasco High School and Fresno Pacific University, earning her bachelor's degree in criminal justice. She has represented the city as a council member since 1998. In 2001, she had the distinct honor to serve as the city's first female mayor. During her service with Wasco City Council, she represented the city on various boards and committees, including the board of directors of the Association of California Cities Allied with Prisons and the current Council of Government's board of directors for many years. She is also the past president of the League of California Cities, South San Joaquin Valley Division. As a small business owner, like that isn't enough responsibility, Cheryl earned her vocational education teaching credential through the UCLA Extension Program. This education and experience was very helpful in leading the efforts for the Downtown Wasco Beautification Project, which included the assistance of local junior high school and high school students. She also served as a mentor for youth involved in the Great Valley Institute Catapult Youth Leadership Program. With her hard work and dedication to the city of Wasco and all Kern County residents, it is no wonder why she is the recipient of multiple recognitions and why she deserves the Ronald E. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award. It is with great honor that we present this Ronald E. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award to Cheryl Wegman of Wasco. Thank you, Cheryl. Wow. I want to know where they got all those pictures. Anyway, it's been a long 20 years. Um, I'm so happy to see a lot of people here today that I've served with for the last 20 years. Shafter, uh, city manager, you know, Wasco Shafter, we got this thing going on. But we've all, we all get along. My passion has been Highway 46 back, gosh, 98, I guess we started it. And I do want to thank Aaron Hakimi and all of the Kern Cog staff. They're awesome. Um, 46 is wonderful now. We've got four lanes. It's safer. I mean, we still have some work to do, maybe 10 miles, 20 miles yet, of 46 from 99 through I-5. But when I see those little flowers on the side of the road, it really, it, it just is awful. We, we shouldn't have that. But we are making progress. And Kern County is awesome. Wasco's my home. I've lived there all my life. and. Uh, this is, I, came, I came tonight and I see all these CDCR people here and I'm thinking, hey man, they're here to see me because I work at Tehachapi, right? <laughs> man, my boss is here and the secretary's here and then the oh, Judge Wolf. <laughs> so it's what it is, right? I want to thank everybody. This is awesome that I get an award at the end of my career. However, I am an elementary school board member now, so a lot less stress, believe me. It's awesome, so thank you so much. It takes a village, and that saying could not be any truer for our next recipient, or should I say recipients. The Thomas Rhodes Improvement Program is a cooperative effort between the City of Bakersfield, County of Kern, Caltrans, and the Kern Council of Governments. The program was named after former Congressman William M. Thomas, who led the effort to secure $630 million for area road projects. Since that day, it has taken a village of organizations to keep this mission up and running. 2018 was a good year for the Thomas Road Improvement Program, or TRIP. 
In January of 2018, the $6.9 million Truxton Operational Improvements Project began. More than 50,000 vehicles use this corridor each day. The half-mile section between the Westside Parkway and Oak Street intersection was heavily congested. This project added a lane in each direction between Empire Drive and Elm Street to ease the congestion. On top of adding a lane, this project also added many safety features including a modified curve at the Truxton Avenue West Wind Drive intersection, an added right turn deceleration lane for westbound traffic turning onto West Wind Drive, and new sidewalks, curb, gutter, and stamped concrete medians. This project only took eight months to complete and was finished in September of 2018. Now residents will not have to wait in congestion on their way to work every morning, which will smooth the flow of traffic and reduce pollution. The Thomas Roads Improvement Program completed this project while also working on multiple other projects, including the Centennial Corridor Widening. But with great planning and execution by the TRIP Partnership, projects continue to finish on time or ahead of schedule, and the roads become better with each project. Thanks to the cooperation from the City of Bakersfield, County of Kern, Caltrans, and KernCog, all these projects were made possible. And Kern County is going to be a nicer place to live and commute because of this amazing partnership. KernCog congratulates the Thomas Rhodes Improvement Program Collaborative Partnership on earning the Chairman's Award of Regional Cooperation. Accepting this award is Nick Fiddler, Public Works Director of the City of Bakersfield again. Thank you. I'll try to keep these comments short because I know I stand in front of you on your way home and I'm sure most of you would like to get out of here soon. So uh, with that, um, again, I, I am truly honored to accept this on, award on behalf of the Thomas Road Improvement Program. Uh, former Congressman Bill Thomas had the vision to improve this uh, Kern County's east-west connectivity through improving our roadway systems. This Truxton Avenue project is one of those projects that has improved accessibility into the downtown corridor and also leading into the improvements of the Centennial Corridor which will connect uh, Kern County from east to west through State Route 58 all the way from I-5 to uh, the east coast through Interstate 40. So uh, with this project I really want to thank uh, Aaron Hakimi, who helped us secure the funding for this project through uh, federal grants, uh, through the Kern Cog, um, through uh, Caltrans helping us get all the encroachment permits that were necessary to get the um, construction under, underneath State Route 99, and then the City of Bakersfield's partners in the program, uh, Parsons Transportation Group, who is the program manager, manager uh, helping coordinate all the efforts of the various departments and agencies. So with that, I really appreciate accepting this award, and again, thank you to Kern Cog for all their support and the recognition of this award. Okay, I was told to let you know that there is a photo banner over there if uh, re award recipients want to take a picture in front of the uh, Kern Cog banner. And we've got uh, more better bicycling, more better parks, more better freeways, more better policing, more better judging. We have a great community because community effort and people work and appreciate all of you. This is, uh, brings us to the conclusion, so let's give everybody one more hand. Thank you and good night.